This video is a part two follow up to a previous one where I refined mercury metal from cinnabar. During the project, I made a lot of mercury contaminated waste, and in this video, you're going to see how I dealt with it. If you haven't seen the previous one, I highly recommend you watch it, otherwise, this video probably is not going to make too much sense. These two solutions are the easiest to deal with, so I decided to do them first. The nitric acid in the beaker on the right is neutralized using a little bit of sodium bicarbonate. There's no need to measure anything out, I just keep adding sodium bicarb until it stops bubbling. To neutralize the potassium permanganate, there's a few ways this can be done, but I like to just add hydrogen peroxide. This reaction is quite vigorous and produces a lot of heat, so it's important to be careful. I continued to occasionally add the peroxide until I felt that all of the potassium permanganate had been destroyed. Manganese dioxide catalytically breaks apart the peroxide, so even when all of the permanganate is gone, it's still going to bubble. I then went back to the other solution, and I added sodium sulfide. When the sodium sulfide is added, it will react with mercury ions and precipitate mercury sulfide. The mercury sulfide will separate out because it's almost completely insoluble in water. This step should also precipitate the other metal ions as their corresponding sulfides. After swirling it around a little bit, I let them stand for a couple hours. When I come back, the manganese dioxide on the left has almost completely separated, and the mercury sulfide has also separated. I decided to deal with the left one first, and it was all filtered through a little bit of sea light. All of the manganese dioxide and the sea light is going to be kept as solid waste. Then, into this solution, I added the contents of our other waste beaker. The beaker was washed a few times to make sure I transferred everything. The reason I did this is that the other solution still had some sodium sulfide in it. It made sense to just combine the two and not waste any of it. I ended up adding a little bit more sodium sulfide, just for good measure to make sure that all of the mercury was removed. I then left this overnight for all of the sodium sulfide to be hydrolyzed to sodium bisulfide. Mercury sulfide can be soluble in sodium sulfide solutions, so this is just a precaution. Then I pass it all through another sea light filter. The beaker started filling up because I stupidly used one that was too small, so I dumped the filtrate into another one. While I was waiting for the rest to filter through, I neutralized what I had with a little bit of bleach. When everything had filtered through, the stuff in my funnel was added to the mercury solid waste. The bleach reacts with the stinky sodium bisulfide to form sodium bisulfate, which is pretty inert. My bleach solution in the big beaker was then transferred to the smaller one to destroy the sulfide in that one as well. I dumped in a bunch of extra bleach just to be sure, and then everything was poured down the drain with a lot of water. Okay, so now we're done with the easy waste. We can move on to the more annoying stuff. In these three containers is all of the water waste from when I was liberating the mercury. The one on the left was the first washing, so it's very concentrated in sodium sulfide and sodium hydroxide. The two bottles also contain some, but the concentration is much less. To clean things up, I attempted to devise a plan, but I ended up just trying a few different things and it became a pretty big mess. I tried to destroy the sodium sulfide using calcium hypochlorite pool tablets, but I got mixed results. Ideally, it would destroy the sodium sulfide just like the bleach would, except it wouldn't really increase the volume very much. I left it for a few hours, and when I came back, it seemed to work in the bottle on the right, but it didn't work for the other ones. This is probably because the stuff here is already pretty dilute and contains very little sodium sulfide and sodium hydroxide. Despite adding more pool tablets, shaking things around, and waiting a few more hours, it didn't seem like much was happening. I probably could have just left it for days or weeks, but I got a little bit impatient and decided to just start adding regular bleach. 
When it's added, there's very clearly a reaction going on. The major reaction is with the sodium sulfide to make sodium sulfate, but there's a bunch of other things going on as well. The bleach seems to be oxidizing other compounds that are present and causing them to precipitate out. When I'm done, there will be no more mercury sulfide and the solution will be strongly basic and quite oxidizing. Under these conditions, there should be little to no mercury dissolved in the water. The bottle on the right was pretty much done, but just for good measure, I added a little bit of bleach before I took it away. Now I just have two containers to deal with, but the stuff in the bottle is pretty high. I had another empty one lying around, so I split the waste between the two. I just continue adding bleach and occasionally mixing things until the blackness completely disappears. The middle one was the first to be done, so I capped it and took it away. Again, we're back to two and I continue to add the bleach. I also split this one between two bottles, but I don't think it was necessary. I just added a little bit of bleach to each one and they were pretty much done. This last one is the most concentrated and it's going to be the most annoying to deal with. I kind of ran out of containers, so I had to split it between this one and the container I did the original reaction in. I added a lot of bleach to each, but it still wasn't done, so I had to transfer it to an even larger container. I honestly probably should have just started with a bucket to begin with, and I'm not really sure why I didn't. Anyway, it was all transferred here, and I just kept dumping in bleach. It didn't take that much more for the green and yellow color to completely disappear. Then just for good measure, I added a bunch more. At this point, the stuff in the container is pretty white, but when I combine all of the other waste, it turns brown. Luckily, there was just enough space to add everything. When everything was added, I stirred it around a little and then I let things settle. When the solid got to around the halfway mark, it's time to start the very fun filtering process. In this long plastic container, I put a filter paper at the bottom and I covered it with a little bit of sea light. Then using a beaker, I added the liquid portion of the waste. The sealate does a very good job at catching all of the small particles, and the liquid that filters through should be crystal clear. As the liquid is collected, we can see that it is indeed very clear, but it's slightly yellow due to the presence of bleach. I kept adding the water until everything was filtered, and the sludge that remained had to be vacuum filtered. So when I was done, this is what I was left with. On the left is the solid stuff, which ended up being this gooey, wet, brown mess. Mixed in with it are the calcium hypochlorite tablets, as well as the sea light that I used to filter it. On the right, we have all of the liquid filtrate, which contains a high concentration of bleach. The liquid is also saturated with salt, so as it sits there and evaporates, white crystals start to come out. To get rid of the liquid, I continually added it to my 5 liter beaker, turned on the heating, and boiled it all off. Eventually, everything had been added and most of it was gone. A lot of salts had precipitated out, and at this point, it's a really good idea to take it off heating. If I were to continue, the beaker might crack. I let it cool a little, and then I transferred it to a plastic container. I left them in the sun, and they completely dried up over the course of about a week. Then they were transferred to some Ziploc bags. On the left, we have all of the stuff that was soluble in water, and the stuff on the right is all the stuff that was insoluble. The exact composition of each is pretty much unknown, but I imagine the white stuff is mostly just sodium salts, and the brown stuff is mostly metal oxides. Now for the important question, how much mercury is actually in this waste? According to a resource that I found, if enough aluminum is used, it should consume up to 99.9% .9 of the mercury sulfide. Considering I used a massive excess of aluminum, there should be little to no mercury left. 
I did a quick test of soluble mercury by adding a gram of either waste to a liter of water. I let it stir overnight, and then using some mercury test strips, I checked the mercury concentration. Assuming that other stuff dissolved in the water doesn't mess with the test, for both of the wastes, I got a mercury concentration of 0.03 milligrams a liter. Because we have a total volume of one liter, it means that a gram of each waste contains about 0.03 milligrams of soluble mercury, which is basically nothing. However, this test doesn't say anything about insoluble mercury, which is the form that it's most likely present in. To do that, it takes a little bit more effort, and I don't really want to spend the time on it, so I'm just going to send a small sample to a lab. I'll update you guys whenever I get the result of the testing. Anyway, that's about it for this video. The next one will be on lead acetate, which is also known as sugar of lead because it tastes like sugar. A big thanks goes out to all of my supporters on Patreon. Everyone who supports me will see my videos at least 24 hours before I post it to YouTube, and if you support me with $5 or more, you'll get your name at the end of the video like you see here. Also, all supporters are able to directly message me, and I try to respond within a day.